Good afternoon, Channel Technical Agronomist Matt Nelson here. Today I'm in Northern Green County and wanted to start looking for some corn rootworm pressure. I know I've seen some adults emerged and with this wind that's passed through, we've started to see some lodging show up. Some of that likely caused by corn rootworm feeding. And while floating roots today, I saw something interesting that I wanted to show you all. So I floated some roots here that I dug out in the field and uh, found what I thought was pretty pretty neat, uh, four different stages of the corn rootworm larvae. So at the bottom there, you see a very, very small one. This is what I was mainly finding, uh, larvae that were uh, almost too small to see. Uh, going up from there, you've got a slightly bigger larvae, uh, moving on to one that's even bigger, which you can see moving here in the video. Uh, those, those two larger instar stages are what are going to be doing the bulk of the feeding. They're going to be moving back outside of the root zone and really causing severe damage. And, and you've even got at the top a, a pupae uh, that floated to the top when I, when I floated these roots in water as well. So uh, this kind of goes to show the importance of why we want to float roots. Uh, it helps us to understand where these corn rootworm larvae are at developmentally. Uh, they kind of emerge in a bell-shaped curve where you'll have some early, some late, and a bulk in the middle. And uh, seeing that the majority of these in, in this field are very small means that we maybe need to think about delaying uh, a fungicide and insecticide application as this field's pretty close to tassel, but a lot of the larvae all, are still smaller developmentally. That said, we're still seeing some bigger instars and even some that are already pupating. So just kind of an interesting look into the life cycle of these, uh, of these larvae out in the field. 